Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we've got two solid science news stories on the sun and Earth's magnetic pole shift. Hope you saw last night's video regarding the previous night's video. Got what I asked for in about 12 hours. Deal is a deal. Win, win, win. All back in gear. We're starting with the last 24 hours on our star. Pretty calm day. Nothing in the way of solar flares or large CMEs on this half of the sun, even though strong CME activity did come off the far side yesterday. Let's dive a bit deeper on the space weather factors in play at the moment. Starting with the plasma filaments, big one running across the south and then to the left, we see the incoming sector is plagued with ropes. Filaments will be a peak watch item as this week unfolds, and that's partially because the sunspots are not as worrisome. Even with the group growing behind the large spreading active region, they aren't developed strongly enough. Riger uptick still a couple weeks from kicking in hard. And then, we are also likely to see the solar wind enhancement from this coronal hole in the south. Won't be a major event, but could spark auroral displays. So again, calm for now, calm expected today, but filaments and coronal holes will be relevant this week and we're due a Riger flaring uptick within about a month. First up in the articles today, this team built a ground-based muon detector in Paraguay, right in the middle of the bulging and growing South Atlantic anomaly. This was long overdue, a cosmic ray detector in the middle of Earth's weak spot. They already got great results last year, which they are reporting here, but most importantly, they are poised to be able to track the space radiation influx at the Earth's weak spot as Earth's magnetic pole shift unfolds. Brilliant. Our top story today is one that I have hinted at Many of you are angry about for reasons I don't really understand, but here are the world's experts now saying it too. Good chance the grand solar minimum is not happening. We're seeing extreme ultraviolet and radio wave signals that say the Gleisberg centennial minimum has passed. That was at the end of the last solar cycle. That would be all the drop we would be getting if that's the case. A very minor minimum, not a grand minimum. While that means the worst of the climatological chaos could wait, it's bad news for our electrified society. With Earth's magnetic field weakening, Many of us were counting on a grand solar minimum to allow Earth's grids to stay up another cycle, looking less likely if this forecast is correct. If the next solar cycle is stronger than this one, I'm already putting our chances of skating through cycle 26 at less than 50%. I always just have the best news for you guys, don't I? But as I mentioned earlier, yes, it sucks that it came to that the last two days, but the right thing was done, and quickly. No events are altered. Quail Day coming this weekend, then Pole Shift Conference and Chicken Day the 19th and the 20th, Grand Opening and Dr. Pierre-Marie Robitaille the weekend after that, Astrophotography Class and Kings of Catastrophe weekend with myself and Dr. Dunning after that. It is just one after another, and folks, spots are filling fast. We have many different ways for you to stay at the ranch itself. Pick your time to come see us. It all begins at ObserverRanch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.